So I decided to do a series. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Decided, fine, to do a, decided to do a series on why we, or why I suppose I take the pictures I do rather than we take the pictures we do, but <clears throat> there's some common ground to be covered. My history, uh, even though I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I, I was born in Alpena County. I went to school and started in a one-room school with Greenwood's one-room school out in Long Rapids. Went to Long Rapids Elementary, then went to Thunder Bay Junior High School, then on to Besser Junior High School. And then I went on to Alpena High and graduated in 1971. I started taking pictures with my little ANSCO, which you see pictured. I went to a couple years worth of 4-H photography classes. I did some work with Milo Verston, who was one of the people who ran the Alpena Photo Center on Chisholm Street. And uh, at that point, I did a lot of family pictures, vacations. As I have come forward to fairly current, and in the early 2000s, I took courses as part of my graduation requirements at Washtenaw Community College. So you see this picture of my dad. Um, years back, rotary dial phones took really poor pictures. And I feel like cell phones have created a photo revolution in many, many ways. The obvious one is that even on an advertisement, you very rarely Hear the phone advertised for the, the characteristics of the phone, rather it's the characteristics of the camera contained within. And so as a result of this, we, most of us have cameras with us all the time. And you can take pictures during COVID. That's one thing that uh, we can celebrate. The cameras I use range from the iPhone to Nikon camera gear primarily Nikon cameras. But I would share a quick story about my dad. Um, probably when he was 70 years old or thereabouts, he, he failed miserably when I was trying to teach him how to use a calculator. And I, I left there kind of disappointed because I had a lot of respect for my dad's intelligence and couldn't figure this out. <clears throat> about 85 or maybe 87, I decided to give him a, an iPhone. So I guess I don't learn my lessons well, but my wife and I left there thinking we probably had just blown up the earth, that this was just not gonna work. And lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, a text, a couple of texts started coming and then, and then pictures. And this was quite amazing. Dad used the iPhone to a great extent to take pictures and send me pictures. His homestead burnt on M65, and was rebuilt to almost mirror the old home. And dad would go up there in a golf cart and take pictures and he would share those pictures with the people who bought the farm as well as share the pictures with me. So I was quite excited to be able to take pictures like this one later on with dad sitting with his iPhone in his hand. And uh, he always bragged about the fact that a doctor, his doctor in Alpena said that Harvey, you're probably the oldest person in Alpena using an iPhone. I use a lot of camera gear. Uh, in taking pictures, I really recommend you have a tripod. Monopod will work also, but a tripod works better. There are any number of tripod options out there and they don't have to be the best in the world, just something to stabilize your camera. You can buy tripod adapters for your cell phones, which will screw onto the tripod and make that more secure. I have all sorts of memory cards, uh, less of an issue with an iPhone. I have multiple batteries, of course. 
another way that you can stabilize things is is with a bean bag and i mentioned a bucky here a bucky is kind of a value added thing i guess uh, it's a thing you put around your neck when you fly and things like that and it's made by a company it's called a bucky i think it's filled with buckwheat but you can actually stabilize your camera on that uh, bucky or a bean bag if you don't have a tripod handy i also use backpacks and uh, i have a lot of props i'm always looking for props and you see my wagon here. Sometimes you'll see, I'll pull a wagon. I mean, your options are to carry a heavy backpack or it's a lot easier to pull a wagon. So this is a picture that I pulled out to the pond in my backyard and uh, was about to embark and take in a picture. So getting into pictures, I uh, have some titles here. I have seven grandchildren, so I obviously have had my share of fun taking baby pictures, and I love small feet, small hands, and uh, because of that, that's the reason I take a lot of the baby pictures I do. There's obviously lots of obvious ones, the headshots, but I'm really intrigued by the size of the feet and the hands. So this is one of my grandson taken out in San Diego. I took this in a manual mode. Um, very small f2.2, so I would blur most of the image and uh, and use one fiftieth of a second. Birds. I uh, I can tell you that I've chased the chased cardinals around for a year in hopes that I would get a picture of a bird or of a cardinal and. Finally, a couple of weeks ago, I was at Michigan State University to do some other photo work. And this cardinal was just sitting in a tree or a bush, I should say, right next to me and sort of talking to me saying, look, I'm here, take as many pictures as you want. I'm not going anywhere. And, and that was pretty much the truth. So I, I had one lens option at that point. Um, so I zoomed in on it and I uh, just let the camera do the work. So I had set to automatic. This, this picture was taken at 450 millimeters and I used uh, my Nikon D7200 to take this picture, but I finally got my, my uh, Cardinal. For some reason I can't, there we go. A few years ago in my backyard, I was, since I have so many geese, you might as well take pictures of them. And I, this picture was taken purely by accident. And I just happened to catch this, this goose standing up at attention more or less. And uh, had my ISO, ISO set at 800. I used one two thousandth of a second on this. And uh, was using my 7300 zoom and a Nikon D70, which is one of the original Nikon digital cameras. I just happened to walk away from this picture. And ironically, a few years later, I started taking pictures from the Michigan State Marching Band. And I've always felt that this picture is kind of like a drum major. And it's sort of come in handy sometimes. Sometimes in the world of hunger and and taking care of my wife, I had to make a lot of meals. So sometimes I'm, I have a camera in the kitchen. So in this case, I took a picture of food and uh, I invite you to take pictures of food. I invite you to, to be creative, to do pictures of all sorts of things. And so this one was taken right here in our kitchen. Uh, this was set at ISO 800 manual mode, one, one twenty-fifth of a second. This was taken with a Nikon Micro Nikkor lens, so I can get in really close. And I used my Nikon D750 to take this picture. Campfires. <clears throat> you need to have your camera at a campfire. It's amazing how the flames go and all the things that happen. 
This picture was taken on the beach in Traverse City. Again, I'm in manual mode, 800 ISO. Took this at f1.8, 160th of a second, 50 millimeter lens and my Nikon D200. But again, these, you know, the, every time that wood is jostled, it's gonna do some things in, in your picture. So you'll find yourself taking a bunch of pictures, but I think you'll be really happy with it. So I encourage you to take this out when you have a campfire. I was in Bloomfield Hills one day for a family reunion and uh, they happened to have a couple of Corvettes and I took this opportunity to see if it was okay for a couple of my grandsons to sit in the Corvette and uh, kind of look with, I guess, maybe minimal interest because obviously they're not quite old enough to drive yet, but it, it creates an interesting span in time, I feel. And so they're sitting there looking at a car that maybe they'll envy someday. I took this in manual mode also, ISO 400 F8, one two hundredth of a second. I was using a 24 to 120 zoom, which I find to be maybe my handiest zoom lens. And I was using a full frame Nikon D700 to take this picture. Caught in the act. I remember walking into headed for my kitchen and I noticed these two little feet on the other side of our pantry door. And so I couldn't resist taking this picture. Um, this was all automatic. It was taken with an iPhone because that's all I had with me at the time. And I would really like to restage this a little bit, but understand that sometimes when you take pictures, you have pretty much one crack at it. So you take the picture, and you appreciate the fact that you have it. And so I just like these little feet on the other side of the pantry door and kind of wondering what reaction I was gonna get as I got closer. Churches, uh, this is the church I grew up in, in Lear, Michigan, which is in north, uh, northwestern corner of Alpena County. And so, my parents are buried there. So the church has a lot of memories, both past and current. This was taken automatic, in an automatic setting or program mode, ISO 200 F11, 1 400th one of a second. And I use my Nikon 18300, which is also a very nice lens to use. If you happen to have it, it gives you a wide range for the Nikon D300. And up in Alpena, you've got a lot of pictures you can you can take like this also. I took this picture because I love the color mix. This picture was taken in Guadalajara, Mexico. This is at a factory where they, they make these glasses and a number of glass items. But when I looked at the shelf, I thought, you know, look at this, look at the color. And so I used, I let the camera use automatic uh, aperture and I used ISO 280, uh, 1.8 so I could have a really tight focus again, 1 30th of a second, uh, Nikon 50 millimeter lens and a Nikon 200 camera. Construction goes on all around us and so I happened to be off the big house here in Ann Arbor one day when, if you've gone to games at the big house, you are familiar with the two great big M's on each side of the field now that house the huge scoreboards. And so this was part of the construction going on and putting these together. And you can see three different people up in there and you're starting to get a feel for how big the letters are. And actually for the structure itself that houses the scoreboard. And so I had a little bit of fun standing out there and taking some pictures one day. Just left the camera in automatic uh, ISO 100 f5.6. I used 1 125th of a second. And again, I, in this case, I had my 18 200 millimeter, but still a wide range available there. So I could zoom in and back off if I wanted to get a picture of the, the entire scoreboard as it looked at that point, uh, Icon D200. 
So construction goes on all around, and sometimes it's it's fun to take construction pictures. Start at the very base of things and uh, kind of take a few pictures every few weeks as the uh, process moves along. This picture was taken in Mexico also. It's one that I, when you look at it, your eye is kind of shot to the color and you can pick up on the brick on the floor. Uh, and then you kind of come back and you can notice the, the door, which almost looks like a jail cell door. This is, is not a jail, but it just creates a, a certain intrigue. And, and you can you can duplicate pictures like this in your own home, uh, in a barn, places like that. I use manual mode here, ISO 800, uh, 3.5, F3.5, and I use one 500th of a second, and I use a 28-300 zoom, and my Nikon D200. I walk a lot early in the morning, and I encourage you to go out early in the morning or late in the day. It's, it's some of the richest color time of the day. And so in this case, this was early morning, a little bit of ice, a little bit of snow, and uh, I dug my way through some bushes and got down to the, just a very small pond here. It's probably, it's not very long at all. I, I'm not gonna guess, but it's right here in Celine. We all have these kinds of scenes available to us. This was taken automatic F, uh, F1.8 at ISO 100, one one twentieth of a second. And I, I took this with my iPhone. Again, <laughs> don't, don't cut yourself short. You have your iPhone with you or a cell phone with you, Use it. You'll be you'll be happy with the pictures. Fall color is quite intriguing, and a lot of times we head for the forest to take those pictures. In this case, I I talked about props earlier, and I have some old ball jars around that I I use on occasion. In this occasion, I took some leaves and put them in the ball jar and tried to use the the bluing effect of the ball jar and took it down to the Saline River and tried to get some reflection in the river. I used ISO 100, F4, F4, and I slowed the camera down to 1 20th of a second. I was using a, a, Nikkor, a micro Nikkor lens, 200 millimeter, and my Nikon D700 camera. And as I look at this picture, I. I think I could be even more intrigued if I slowed it down even more, but then I might lose the reflection. So, um, so it's kind of an intriguing picture using fall color in a little different way. Family groups are sometimes uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it seemed like in our family reunions, a lot of times people wanted to run after about a half an hour so you didn't have to be part of the family picture. Uh, it just seemed like it required a lot of work and things like that. Some people wanted to be in it, some didn't want to be in it, so on and so forth. Well, in this case, which was a family event at our home, I uh, decided I would go upstairs and shoot the picture from upstairs. And so everybody could just kind of stand up, kind of laugh about the way I was doing it and uh, appreciate a little different vantage point and, and not, uh, maybe not be so tight to what we might consider to be everybody sit on the couch tall people in the back, so on and so forth. So you might consider changing things a little bit. I've done this kind of thing with a ladder also with my grandkids. I've put up a 10 or a 12 foot ladder and had them all sit on different steps of the ladder. So sometimes changing the, the look a little bit helps. So this was taken automatic at automatic setting. It was taken in ISO 1600 F8, 160th of a second. Use my 18-300 zoom and an Nikon D300. Well, Mark, is that your self-portrait in the lower left corner or lower right corner? That's my, yeah, that's my self-portrait. That's right. I, I should <laughs> add that I have the camera set up for uh, however long it takes me to go down the stairway. And, and so five seconds a few years ago has now become 10 or maybe 15 because I don't I was gonna say, you have to be pretty quick to go down a lot of stairs but get right. posed like that <laughs> I, I do have a rail though that I could go down if I had to 
but I, I need to test that before I use it. Farm fields, a lot of those in Alpena. Uh, I grew up on a farm, so I, I'm attracted to farm fields. In this case, I was attracted by the haze in the distance. The tree is about a mile from my house and I use that tree a lot for pictures. And uh, I obviously like tractors and trailers and equipment and farm equipment and fields and so on and so forth. So this picture was, was well set up for me. I took it on automatic and uh, ISO 100 F3.8, 1 250th of a second. And I used a, I used a 140 lens. Uh, actually, I think the, the E8700, which is the Nikon I used, uh, that's all a self-contained camera. So uh, I'm not changing lenses on that camera, but again, you get these hazy effects and, and it's it's great. Everything up front is going to appear to be really sharp. It's it's gonna be kind of a gray sky, which is going to cause the colors to pop. And uh, And again, you have this hint of things in the distance. This is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, this barn used to set out in the Manchester, Michigan area, which is not too far from me. I used to drive that road a lot, never really paid too much attention to things until I noticed this barn one day when the sky was getting ready, I think for probably for a summer shower. And so I, I took this picture on automatic at ISO 50. Uh, again, I was using E8700, so it's everything's internal to the body, to the camera, and I used one two hundredth of a second. I returned to that barn many times after taking this picture in particular. I have a number of pictures of that barn taken, and I was disappointed a few years ago when I drove out there to take some more pictures. The barn's gone, and now there's a subdivision being built there. So, again, I grew up on a farm, so I. I grit my teeth when I see farms, barns disappear. Again, this one doesn't look like probably the healthiest barn, but roof's in good shape and uh, doesn't take me long to put me in the hay mill. My daughter sent me flowers on the anniversary of my wife's passing. And so I took those flowers down to the Slane River and put the the uh, the ball jar, if you will, in the water and uh, backed away and started to take some pictures. And so this is taken at ISO 100, F18. This is a 30 second picture. So it causes all kinds of, I think, wonderful things to happen in this river. And this river is probably no more than six feet wide. And uh, I used my 7200, uh, even though I used F18, but it's a 7200 F28 lens, so I have a lot of flexibility with that lens. Nikon D750. I uh, And yes, I have boots with me. That's another thing you can carry with you as a part of your camera gear, because sometimes you might have to walk into the water to do a picture. But uh, this picture has a lot of a lot of things tied to it, a lot of memories tied to it. I uh, do not shy away from taking pictures at funerals. Um, in particular, this was my dad's funeral. And so you saw Lear Church a little bit ago. This is the pallbearers taking my dad's casket. And I was the first, <clears throat> my wife and I were the first ones out of the church and I could not help but take this picture. I took this with, uh, I said Nikon gear and here Sony pops up. It was the only camera I had in my pocket. And I will always appreciate this picture. When you're at family reunions, keep yourself tuned into generations. And that seems pretty obvious, but this was probably the second reunion before I realized what was going on here. And this is a friend of, of mine who just happened to be a hundred years older than my grandson, one of my grandsons. And so I got her to go out and sit on this this little radio flyer bike next to my grandson. They're 100 years old. There's 100 years difference in age. And uh, I took this at F10, 1 400th of a second with my D3300. 
And uh, the only thing I would caution you is that when Wanda had to get up off the bike, it was a little more work than I had planned on, but I, I really appreciate this picture. She was 104, I think, in this picture. But later that year, she threw out the first pitch at a Detroit Tiger game. Again, generations. Uh, this is my aunt. I've always appreciated this picture of her talking to her grandma and grandpa. And of course I lost, that would be obviously my great grandma and great grandpa. I lost them a long time ago, but I've always had this picture around. So I decided that I wanted a picture of her holding this picture. So she's looking at herself and uh, I'm sure accepting the congratulations from her grandma and grandpa. The picture was taken in our living room. I just used, uh, there's no flash used here. I encourage you to sit by a window and use natural light whenever you can. This picture called ghosting, this is a picture that I took over the course of two and a half seconds, but I'm in this picture. So I have the camera on a tripod. This is taken in Dexter, Michigan on the river. And I set the camera up to take the picture in 10 or 15 seconds. I walked down there and I established a movement. I had a yellow coat on to try to create some color. And I try not to stand in any one position very long so I can create what I would call a ghosting effect. Glass. This is a picture of rain on your window. Raindrops, I should say. And this is looking at the sunrise. And if you look, you'll see little orange parts and very, and a lot of those raindrops. And that's the sunrise. And you can do that fairly easily, except you have to get up early. But I took this in manual at ISO 100 F2.8. This is a 13 second, or 13 seconds is the course of time I used with a micro Nikkor lens. Hands, this picture uh, has a lot of meaning to me. This is my mom and dad. My wife called this dueling IVs. They were both in the hospital at the same time in Alpena. We were trying to get them in the same room. I wasn't working well and the nurse came in and she saw my mom and dad holding hands. And uh, again, they both had IVs and it wasn't long after that they were, they were in the same room. I have down here that I converted it to black and white. I should have taken that off. I, I thought about doing that, but I decided to stay with color. This, of course, was taken with an iPhone. But you can use hand pictures in, in any number of ways. I, I encourage you to take hand pictures, uh, the older hand with the younger hand. There's just all kinds of ways to do it. Historical buildings, if you live around Ann Arbor, you may be familiar with the Nichols Arcade. The uh, uh, Nichols Arcade is, is on State Street. It's a famous place, a lot of storefronts. I went down there with the fisheye lens a few weeks ago and took this picture at ISO 100 with my D7200. But you can see the brick effect. Uh, you can see the wrap that's created with the uh, fisheye lens. Icicles. You can have a lot of fun with icicles. You got to and I play with the camera a little bit, but uh, sometimes you can get the reflection and the drop on the right side. You actually see multiple drops and then you see a bigger drop. You can see the, the, uh, the world inverted. This is at an ISO 1000, this is F32. This is one two thousandth of a second with a micro Nikkor 200 lens and taken with a Nikon D7200. Sometimes we get a clue that Things are going to get a little icy. So I, again, back to my props, I went down to my basement and got out a bunch of Duplo blocks and made this truck up to indicate that it got icy. And I just let the truck sit down on my deck table. And the next morning, I had this picture waiting for me. So this was in manual mode, 1 15th of a second with my Micro Nikkor 200 lens. And uh, I think it creates a fun effect. I have no idea if this was the same day, but I happened to catch this little piece of ice inside of these leaves. 
this was the camera was set to manual ISO 800 F8 one one hundredth of a second. This is with a 105 micro Nikkor lens. Uh, if you have micro Nikkor lenses, you can get in ultra close, and that's one advantage of the micro Nikkor lenses. If you're lucky enough to have some of those, they, they are really a handy lens to have around. We probably all, maybe, all have a picture because mom told me to. I never really had, mom never really got involved in photography a lot. She, she, uh, I don't know, she just kind of wanted to shy away from the camera. But after Christmas one year, she came up to me and she said, I want you, I would like you to take a picture of, of dad and I. And so I had no idea what to expect. And after everybody left, it was just my wife and I and my parents. And out she comes with these antlers and a hat for my dad. And she wanted a picture for their Christmas card the next year. And so I took this picture because mom told me to. I used a flash. I used automatic uh, ISO 400, 1 60th of a second. Used a wide range zoom and my Nikon 200. And since I've lost both my parents now, pictures like this mean a lot. And uh, another thing I really encourage you to do. Moments in time. My wife got cancer in 2015. And so one of the significant things that happen when you get radiation is that you get to ring the bell at the hospital when your radiation is done. And so I went to the basement again and made up a little truck and took this picture of her on the day that her radiation wrapped up. And, and of course, the shirt kind of signifies how she and I, and I think the whole world feels about cancer. Another moment in time happened just uh, four months before she passed away. I rolled her into the Peony Gardens in Ann Arbor because that's where we got married. And uh, this was our 25th wedding anniversary. And so I rolled her into the Peony Gardens and was able to capture some pictures of her enjoying the place that 25 years earlier had been the scene of our wedding. Everything was set automatically, again, using a very common zoom my 24 to 120 and my Nikon D700 camera. As a photographer for the Michigan State Marching Band, you look around all the time and the last game of the year is always a, a time when there's a lot of emotion. And for the flag bearers for the Michigan and the Michigan State flags, these two had been marching for four years and this uh, I happened to turn and see this, this happening behind me and took the picture. It's, uh, it's fun to see and it's, it's emotions that are, are deeply felt. Now forget the F56.3, it's actually F6.3. I need to hire a new typist. It's at 130, 1 320th of a second. Again, I'm back at the 24, 120 lens. The moon, we usually get a chance once a month to take pictures of the full moon. And so this was uh, the end of January, I think the, I think they call it the wolf moon, I believe. I took this in manual mode at ISO 100, F111, 1 200th of a second. I was using my biggest Nikon zoom, my 200 to 500 zoom lens and uh, my Nikon 7200. The next morning, I think I drove out to Bridgewater, Michigan and took this picture as the, the moon was deciding to go away for the day. In manual mode, ISO 400, I'm scanning this, this farm field and I found this tree, which I kind of liked, and I put the moon in a place that I wanted it and uh, took the picture. And you've got a lot of options for this up north. Music on ice. I. I'm a big fan when I finally get the snow off the river or off the pond in the backyard and using ice and reflection and things like that. I, again, back to my props, I happened to find this horn for $25 one day. And uh, my daughter has, she's a French horn player. She's, she has played it, so it does work, but it gets used uh, in other cases for me. So it's, uh, I use it the way I play French horn and that's to take pictures of it. This was a one second photo at F22 with uh, an Nikon 16 to 35 zoom. And because uh, my daughter plays it, that's the reason I took the picture. 
grandkids are uh, they continue to be a big part of pictures and and so this is a uh, peak i call it because he's peeking out of the leaves years and years and years ago i took one of my favorite pictures of his mom and she was playing in leaves and so i have tried to duplicate some of those things with my with her kids and uh, this is one of those that I felt came kind of close. Everything shot in automatic, one two fiftieth of a second, 18 to 55 zoom. And I took this with an Nikon D5500. A lot of us have pets. I took this just a few days ago of the cat and the railing on going out onto our deck. Um, was taken right here out of the kitchen, didn't have to go outside and do anything, just needed that cat to stand in the doorway and not run outside, which I didn't think was going to happen, and it didn't. This was taken at ISO 100, F4, I used 1 32,000th of a second, and a Nikon 7200 millimeter lens. But you can really see the eye. The eye is, is something that my eye is drawn to. I love music and I like to sit down at the piano from time to time. And so I decided that I would light the piano a little bit and, and try to take a shot with my fisheye lens. And so this is taken again with the fisheye ISO 100 F22. And this is a one second photo. So I set the camera, give myself enough time to get to the piano bench without tripping over something and, uh, to see if I can blur the hands a little bit. Reflections. There's so much you can do with reflections, from a mud puddle to a lake to a pond. Uh, your glasses, sunglasses, are great for reflection pictures. These roses were purchased for me at, when I retired, and I had them on my counter for a long time. and had trouble throwing them away. And finally I realized that they look kind of cool in the dry state. And so I took them out on my deck on my table and I shot this picture along with a number of others. But this one I think really brings the reflection idea to the forefront. So this is shot in manual, one five hundredth of a second, shot with a micro micro lens and my D750. This is a picture that uh, it's probably my most famous picture. It was shot at the 100th Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. I was in the press box and uh, we shot this at ISO 200, F7.1, 1 800th of a second. I used a prime lens, I used a Nikon 24 millimeter lens to take this picture with my Nikon D700. Silhouettes. This is a great time of the year to take silhouette pictures. And, and yes, that French horn has reappeared. It's hung on a tree in the backyard. So my daughter ever sees this picture. She, if she didn't know the origin of French horn, she'd be a little disappointed. But uh, this can be done with all sorts of things. The sun rises in the background, could be a sunset, but uh, I urge you to take silhouette pictures. If, if you do it no other way, do it with trees. Um, once they fill up with leaves, it's a little less fun, but fall will be back and you can do it there. So in this case, I used a manual lens, or I used manual settings, excuse me, ISO 100, used an 85 millimeter Nikon prime lens, F22, and used 1 40th of a second with my Nikon D700. I look at books a lot and I encourage you to do the same all sorts of photography books out there. You've got the Alpina Library, you've got places where you can get books and, and just look at pictures. And for a long time, I looked at pictures like this. And so I was out at Dexter, the same river I did the ghosting shot from, and I set my camera up in ISO 100. This is at F29, one half second, and used my Nikon 200 micro Nikkor lens. And, I'm trying to blur the water and uh, you can have some fun time with this. You need not go any further than the Thunder Bay River to get pictures like this. 
Snowflakes. Seems we have lots of those right now. It's just taken a few days ago as the sunrise was happening. You can see a little bit of orange in the bottom, a little orange light in the sunflakes. I uh, used ISO 100 F13 to give myself a little depth of field. 1 60th of a second. My, again, my micro Nikkor 200 millimeter lens. But it's interesting if you can get in close to snowflakes, the, uh, the formation of snowflakes is just impressive. The snowy morning, we have so much of this happen and you'll get this wet snow, which just piles up on the branches. And I know it's really hard on the trees. Usually it's followed by some warm weather, so they get some reprieve, but um, it also creates a great black and white effect. And I, I find it's a, such a rich time to take pictures where you can just drop a little bit of color into your picture. In this case, it's a, it's a railroad car which sits all by itself on the edge of Saline. And uh, I don't know what where it's headed, but I am gonna make use of it as many times as I can taking pictures. And so you see the snow all over the place and, and then you see that hint of color, which again, you have days like this frequently in the winter time and I urge you to get your cameras out. Use automatic on this one, ISO 250 F10, one four hundredth of a second, and I used a 5500 Nikon camera. Sunrise reflection, again, this time of the year is a very rich time. Uh, you can use ice, sometimes the ice starts to, start to go away, of course, and you can use a very, very calm pond. And uh, you'll be, I think you'll be happy with the color mix. Uh, sunrise has such rich color and this was taken with an iPhone. So again, go out there and take pictures. This is a sunset, the other side of the day, in my backyard and camera in manual mode, 1 30th of a second. Uh, there's so much that happens at what I call the bookends of the day, the sunrise and the sunset, the color, the, the mix and the change. It changes so fast sometimes and sometimes the change just makes the picture that much richer. And so I encourage you to, if you don't like to get up early in the morning, I understand that and go out later in the day and use the sunset. And I also am one that keeps track of, I have a list of trees. So I sometimes know where I want to go when I need trees. It sounds a little strange probably, but we all like uh, really, really rich trees to take pictures of. This is a theme picture. I used this in photography class. We had to take a picture with a theme. So I took this picture down at the river in Saline, an automatic ISO 400 F9, one 320th of a second with my Nikon 18200 zoom. This picture, if you can guess the title to it, it's called Music in Three Quarter Time. The grandkids, some of the grandkids are back again. I grew up on a farm with Alice Chalmers tractors. So when the kids are in town, you'll find me hanging around the implement dealerships and just happen to run into an old Alice Chalmers tractor on this visit, thank goodness. Set the camera to manual, ISO 400, F9, one five hundredth of a second, and uh, stirs a lot of memories for me sitting there where my youngest grandchild is sitting. <clears throat> but I also sat on the toolbox where another grandchild sitting, and uh, we probably violated all kinds of rules of safety, I suppose, but oh, the memories when you get pictures like this. So I encourage you to go out and take some tractor pictures too, if you have some farm roots, or maybe you just like tractors. Upside down. This picture uh, was taken in North Carolina with my oldest grandchild and my wife. And I noticed they were hanging upside down and they were visiting. And so I don't know how long they visited because the blood tends to run to the head, but 
this has always been a favorite picture. And since I don't have my wife anymore, it becomes even more favorite. But take advantage of uh, your creativity. Let's see where you can go with it. This was taken with a Nikon 35 millimeter prime lens at uh, f1.8. Waterfalls, uh, you know that you're, you have the Akiak Falls. You don't have a lot of waterfalls in Alpina, but uh, this was taken in Norway. I'm Norwegian primarily, and uh, I had a chance to go to Norway a few years ago and, and tour one of the fjords, and this was one of the waterfalls. It's, uh, it's such, a, such a beautiful country for photography. This was taken at 1 180th of a second. I used an 18 to 55 zoom, Nikon D200. Weddings. I took this picture of my stepson and his wife when they got married at Disney World. And uh, one of the things afterwards is brides will, and grooms will walk around the park after they've been married. And in this case, it was right by the riverboat ride. And so I took advantage of the time to take a picture. And so I used a fairly tight 3.5 f-stop, 50 millimeter lens. And uh, it's interesting to watch people's reactions. Call this that yellow line. This picture I took a few weeks ago, very close by here. And I just happened to notice they paved this road last summer. And in doing so, I noticed a lot of reflection. And so in this case, well, I was noticing the reflection. I also noticed a runner coming up alongside of me. And so it was interesting as I was starting to form this picture. And so I let the runner go by a ways. I took advantage of the reflection. Again, it's one of these sort of black and white days. And so in this case, the yellow line is the hint of color. I took, I went to the zoo a few weeks ago. I found that I had never gone to the zoo before by myself. I always had kids with me or something to interfere with what I was, the reason I wanted to be there and that was to take pictures. So I went down to the uh, Toledo Zoo a few weeks ago and was, you know, one of maybe 50 people in the zoo. It was great. Had my wagon with me, had my tripod, had three or four camera options and I just had a good time. And so one of the pictures I came home with was this one of a tiger and, uh, it was just great. I used my biggest zoom on this, this tiger and uh, I I had a good time, but I, I will go back with kids in the future, believe me. I, Papa has to go and have some fun with the grandkids. So around Alpena, and I encourage you to take pictures around Alpena because I know a lot of you are from Alpena. And so I'm gonna talk about Alpena for a, a brief bit. It's again my home. I have a lot of appreciation for Alpine. I haven't been there for a number of years and I look forward to getting back soon. This picture is going to be familiar to some of you because it's in Hillman, the uh, Brush Creek. And uh, on the other side of that was a bridge that my grandfather had constructed in the early 20s. It's been taken out of there now, but uh, well, I was taking pictures of that bridge. I noticed this new facility had been, at least it looked new. I'm not sure what year it was built, but uh, I took this picture up in Hillman. So you have you have a number of things that you can take pictures of up in Alpena County. You just need to get in the car in some cases. Some cases just take a walk. This picture is, uh, I noticed one today, in fact, of the inside of the Eluski grist mill. This is the Eluski mill up by Posen. I remember going to this mill when there was a dam going across and I would go there with my dad in an old truck and we would take lumber up there to get it cut up. And now it's, I believe it's a wedding venue now. I took this picture on automatic F13, one five hundredth of a second. Uh, but again, it's uh, it's just barely into Presque Isle County on Lear Road. Big fan of barns. 
This barn happens to be my great grandpa's barn. It's on M65. If you're ever traveling between Long Rapids and Posen, you'll see this barn. And this barn has a lot of history in our family. It's not owned by the family anymore, but um, my dad used to talk about jacking this barn up and putting that white line you see in there because the wood was rotting out. And so they replaced it with concrete, I think. Um, and so there's a lot of history with this barn and, and there's a lot of barns, fair amount of barns, I suspect up in Alpena still, I hope. I drive around Washtenaw County looking for barns because I just like to do barn photography. I know in Alpena, you have a bucket. I think it's down at Starlight Beach. I love this concept for family pictures. <laughs> My family might not like it, but so I've taken pictures. This is downstate here where we have a bucket also. And I had my uh, my two daughters are in this picture with their kids. And uh, you're starting to see the reactions as the water leaves the bucket and uh, they get pretty doused. And so I had the camera set on manual, ISO 400, F10, one one thousandth of a second so I could stop the water or come close to it with a D5500 camera. But I urge you to take advantage of these things. I, I just, when I saw there was a bucket in Alpena, I was pretty excited. Alpena churches. <clears throat> we talked about the Lear Church earlier. My parents were not married at the Lear Church. They were married at the Grace Lutheran Church in Alpena. And so I've always had this picture, the one on the left was taken after their wedding. And so after their 60th wedding anniversary, I took mom and dad down to the Grace Church and tried as best I could to duplicate the shot from 60 years before. And so I just let automatic take over here at ISO 100, 180th of a second. And uh, today without my parents, I'm so happy I have it. Duck Island Bridge. Hope I have the name right. I. Uh, saw this bridge the last time I was in Alpena and, and going out to the island when I was in high school was uh, a big no-no. You weren't supposed to go out there and people would sneak out there and all this stuff. And this bridge is to me is a, a big icon, a big add to Alpena. And so I went down there early in the day, a couple of times actually, and took pictures of the bridge, tried to get some reflection ISO 100 F14, one fifth of a second with uh, 18 to 300 zoom. So I had a lot of range here with my zoom. And uh, I know a lot of people are making use of the Duck Island Bridge. And again, I, I can't tell you enough about taking pictures. You got it in the sunrise on this side and you got the sunset on the other side. So it's, it's really nice. My grandpa was a captain on the Great Lakes, and uh, so I have a lot of interest in freighters and even more interest in the Alpena. So happy to have my hometown sailing around the Great Lakes. She comes into Alpena a lot because she hauls cement, and so you have chances to take pictures of her coming into Alpena. A few weeks ago, I noticed this was, <clears throat> she was going to lay up in, the, in this picture in Cleveland. And uh, so I drove up to Marysville and took pictures of her on the St. Clair River. Pretty much let the camera go to work in automatic ISO 800, use one one thousandth of a second and use my biggest zoom. I know that you you have an ice monster up there near the, Star, the Starlight Beach. Again, I don't know how well it's doing this year, but uh, you have, I think probably can use that to use to do similar pictures. This is taken at one of the dams here in Ann Arbor. And maybe you could get close enough to the four mile, the seven mile, or maybe even down in Alpena at the dam and, and be able to duplicate shots like this. Taking manual ISO 100, F32, one one fourth of a second, and I use my micro micro lens. But obviously the water's flowing because it's coming down from the <clears throat> over the dam and it sticks around because of the, the wonderful cold weather we've had for a few weeks. Lighthouses, you've got some of those up in Alpena. A uh, couple famous ones in the Presque Isle area. This one 
happens to be the Port Huron light. And uh, I just went out a few weeks ago and took pictures of it. Seagulls. I always remember seagulls. When Lud's restaurant opened in Alpena, <clears throat> used to be a, kind of a, you almost had to close your window so they wouldn't grab french fries out of the car. But here I am taking pictures. Same day I took the Alpena freighter picture. You can actually see the Alpena right above the, the seagull. But I used a tight focus here to get a picture of the seagull. And uh, came home and looked at it and I thought, eh, I kind of like this. So you've got lots of seagulls, I'm sure, up there to take pictures of. So I urge you to, to go out and take a few seagull shots. Uh, this was taken at Eastern Michigan University, Ypsilanti. In manual mode, I used ISO 800 to try to stop the, the uh, fastball that the pitcher just threw. I used one one sixteen hundredth of a second. Used my biggest zoom, and you can almost read the name on there. I'm not sure I zoomed in to see if I can, but it's pretty close. And you can do that up. You have a lot of sports in Alpena to practice with. You have the waterfront, such a rich, a rich area with the uh, the windbreak you have up there. This was taken on my mom's 80th birthday. We had gone to John uh, Lau's saloon for supper. And uh, unfortunately, we lost the restaurant a few months ago. But uh, I took mom and dad out, out there and, and shot this picture. And uh, it'll forever be a day in my memories. Let the camera shoot it automatic at F11, one five hundredth of a second, and used a very wide zoom. We probably all have a tough picture. This is the toughest picture I've ever taken. Taken of my wife, she was wearing an Optune, which is a series of pads you wear on, a, on your scalp to try to slow down cancer. And we were there with the grandkids, a day when typically you'd be smiling and having all kinds of fun. And I happened to turn and look at my wife and see her sitting in this kind of a position. And I think it was one of those moments maybe where she was really thinking about what crap cancer causes and maybe where she was headed. And so I, I understand that sometimes this is gonna happen. It may happen for you too. You may take a picture that you might call your toughest picture. So I'm about to wrap up. It's time for you to hit the road with your cameras. I urge you to go out and use your cameras. Uh, look around, look everywhere. There are pictures that are so close to you, possibly even right now that uh, maybe you need to slow down and, and take a look. Family, don't miss the chance to take family pictures. I have so many pictures that I can't take anymore because some people that I knew really well and loved dearly are no longer here. And one of those people, my wife took this picture of me looking back at Spartan Stadium. And I urge you to have good luck, be persistent, be patient, smile, and remember that you're being creative. It's important to keep your brain active. And so I find photography to be a good way to do that. And don't forget to back up your pictures. But, and sometimes we complain because, well, I don't know what, but anyway, if for no other reason, go into your kitchen, grab your food grater. And I used a fisheye to take this picture, but this is looking into my food grater through the window out into my backyard. And so if you don't think you have any props around, you probably have a food grater in your kitchen. I find myself doing these in memory of my wife. She was a psychologist who worked only with brain injuries, primarily with brain injuries, I should say. And she went on to learn to take pictures in a big way. She helped me a lot with photo work up at Michigan State. And uh, she's missed dearly. She passed away in October 2019 from the cancer that afflicted her for, and both of us really, for four years. And that's it.
Well, Mark, that was a lot of very interesting ideas that we can follow through with. I never really looked down the inside of my food grater, but I'll have to do that. <laughs> uh, I got to, what do I do here? I stop share? Yeah, if you want to, right. But do I, oops, not new share. Do I pause share? You don't know, just either at the top of your screen, I think it'll, it'll uh, click on that and it'll, it should be a red bar up there that says stop oh, share. Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. It's got to wake up. Well, <laughs> that's what oh. we love about Zoom, that things move all over the place, you know, depending I on know. what you're doing. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Well, it looks like we had a big audience. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, i think great fun no it was it was very interesting uh you uh obviously highlighted a lot of options for taking photos some of which i have taken advantage of others i hadn't really thought about but uh anyone else out there have some comments questions i know there's a couple chat uh comments about thank you mark uh anyone like to do a verbal uh, Hi, this is joyce combs um i have to say mark i especially love the photo of your grandson with the leaves i think that's a great idea it gives me a lot of ideas for my grandchildren thank you very much and comically um we tried to do that picture in October when the leaves fall and it was so hard to, to get done. We couldn't, the leaves hadn't really fallen yet when they were here, they were here to surprise my wife for her birthday. And so we were gathering leaves out by a fairly heavily traveled road. And my daughter didn't really want the kids climbing and leaves by the road. And so it was a difficult process, but unbeknownst to me, we were going to get some, like 60 or 70 degree weather practically at Christmas time. And I was able to pull the leaves in the front yard into piles. And that picture was actually taken <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's. Wow. But yeah, you can have a lot of fun with leaves. <laughs> well, I I, I'm going to try. Ago. I did that a few years, uh, quite a few years ago when my first two grandchildren were little and I had them out raking leaves in the backyard and they were like two and three. And just seeing them with the big rake was so cute. But now I yeah, got to yeah. get the camera out because my great grandson is turning four tomorrow and I need to get some pictures of him. Yeah, I don't lose those opportunities to take any number of pictures. Oh my gosh. I, I stood under that bucket with my grandkids. I didn't use that picture, but <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> grandpa, sometimes grandpa has to be willing to take some of these risks so that they. The daughters will agree to do it. <laughs> there was a comment underneath Mark's kind of, anybody else have a comment? This is Jodine. I just wanted to say it's so heartwarming to see your photographs, all of them, but um, your dad and mom, we miss them so much. And to see their wedding photograph and then see them at their 60th and all of the other photos that you shared is really, really touching. Well, they, uh, they square danced a lot with you. We Me too. <laughs> oh, you too? I didn't realize that. <laughs> yep. So, Mom was, uh, oh, it was like pulling teeth to get her to come out of that door at Grace. I know it was a little cold. I have to give her that. But I wanted that picture after their 60th wedding anniversary. I wanted to be able to duplicate or come close to their wedding picture. And fortunately we got it done. Thank goodness. I think <laughs> the a lot of the waterfront picture, you know, we, we went down to John Lau. It was the day my, my elementary school closed. And so I, I was there on the day my elementary school opened and I, I wanted to go back on the day it closed. So I went back to Long Rapids elementary and I took pictures and, and all that stuff. And, and I knew that we wanted to take mom to eat and uh, we took her a little bit early. So I really had hoped that I didn't have quite as much, quite a burning sun going into her eyes when we took that picture on the waterfront. But, you know, understand that sometimes you get what you get. 
And uh, that waterfront is, is such a great place to take pictures. The rocks, the, you got the lighthouse there. Um, I always remember sitting at Thunder Bay Junior High School listening to the foghorn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of memories. Your enthusiasm is motivational. <laughs> well, I don't know why that is exactly, but. Well, there's not a lot of enthusiasm around. <laughs> also, when you come across somebody that really has a passion for something, it's just, it's exciting. You just, you know, fire everybody up. Well, I, I, uh, you know, I, I like to take pictures and I, my dad got his first, his first camera was an Argus camera. And I remember he probably had to save a while to get that camera. And I grabbed that camera one day and I jammed that camera because, you know, you only had 20 pictures or 24, probably 20. And I wanted to keep pulling the film and I probably did. I probably pulled it right out of the canister. And he had to get it <laughs> fixed and he wasn't happy about it. And I was, I was disappointed. I just didn't understand what I had done. But uh, fortunately, you know, it didn't shy me away from taking pictures. And my grandmother took so many pictures um, that today when I look at pictures, you know, when you have one where you have a person, you have a hundred years difference. I took that picture three different reunions before I lost, I lost Wanda at 106 years old. And, uh, you know, every year Isaac knew that Buffalo was going to come in and grab him, and I was going to sit him down next to this old, older lady that someday he'll understand that, uh, or maybe find it hard to believe that the person sitting next to him was 100 years older than he was. And that's extra special for people who haven't seen your newsletter. Um, wow, that's another thing you do for, I've just never seen any other family that has a person in it who takes that care <laughs> Uh, maybe you could tell the other people about it, but it's phenomenal, Mark, really. Well, it got, it got even worse when I joined Constant Contact. It, I, I thought that was going to make it easier for me. And it, it has made it easier in a lot of fronts, but it's made me do more, which, oh, well. It allows me to know my family in a way that a lot of people, a lot of kids don't know their family. So, well, that's, that's good. Sure. So it's a good thing. Like, really, with today's distance between family members, it's uh, it's good to know because I grew up with, uh, you know, grandparents uh, a couple miles away. That's not true anymore. Yeah, I, the same is true for me. My grandparents were two tenths of a mile away and my other grandparents were in Alpena, so they weren't that far away either. I just lost mom's parents very young. Mom was 30 and 33 when she lost her grandparents her parents. And uh, so we lost them really early, but I, the ones that lived next door were had, you know, 20 years after grandpa retired was when he passed away. So we had a lot of, a lot of fun. So yeah, maybe someday I'll talk about it. I can't quite figure out how to talk about the newsletter, but even if you showed it, I mean, people would be in awe. I'm, Anyway, I am awestruck because he goes through every day of the year, who was born, who died, who had children, photographs, um, old ones, new ones, in between ones. It's, I don't honestly know anybody else's family that has something like that. Well, that's, that could be true. Let's try to figure out what to do. If something were to happen to me, <clears throat> what to do with what I have here, which you know, the history that I have here is a culmination of 30, probably 35 years worth of building a database. And I work on that database every day. So Mark, is this a uh, email you send out or a blog or what's, what is it? No, it's an email that I send to my family and then I violate it on occasion. I no. send it to people like Joe Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's better than Facebook then. But Jodine's husband was in that funeral picture. He was a pallbearer for my dad, one of them. Okay. 
Yeah, Larry used to go out and pick up your dad, and and your dad would always want him to drive by the homestead, you know. And um, anyway, we missed them a lot. And of course, Larry and Harvey being hunting partners, I guess you could say. And right. About a year before your dad died, Larry got stuck out there in his truck, and your dad went out there and dug him out. <laughs> Yeah, Dad, well, well into his 80s, he, he used a chainsaw that was heavier than anything I could lift. And finally, I got Mom to take a camera out there and get a picture of Dad with his chainsaw. I thought, you know, it doesn't seem to happen when I'm up there. I seem to forget about it. And Mom, just take the camera out there and press the button. <laughs> so she did. Thank goodness. But, ah. Uh, I think Larry was involved in cutting the legs off of the bed. He was. Yeah, they made the bed lower for mom, which was important for mom. And your dad and Larry cut wood together a lot. Yeah, I still want to get up. I want to get up to Alpino with Ray and and uh, I want, I don't know if he has that wood chipper or not. I want to, I want to get up there with a couple of cameras and shoot some pictures of wood chipping from a distance, of course. I don't want to kill myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking wanna... about Ray Zielinski? Yes, yeah, in the, in the photo club. You would like just being on his property because he saves things. And so out in the weeds, there's old pieces of, you know, farm implements. and. Oh, yeah, that would be, that'd be dangerous. I, I would have to allow an extra <laughs> week, probably. My dad used to have the same thing out and he, he sold all the metal that was back in the woods. But those old trucks and old combines and balers and all that stuff where they make they really make classic photos uh well you know, when along, larry along hunts, larry hunts, I take pictures oh, and when larry fishes i take pictures of the lures and <laughs> well, lures know. lures would be good too yeah okay so yeah it's it's uh i guess Photo is a, it could be considered a disease, but I think it's a great, I think it's great therapy. And today with the digital world, you can take a picture and look at it right away. You don't have to wait for a week for the mail carrier to bring your pictures back and yeah, true. all that stuff. You can, you can look at it. And if you decide you don't like it, then, then go back at it. Like I said, be patient. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, Mark, you said your uh, your grandmother took a lot of pictures. Are you the resident holder of those, or? Yeah, I have. Uh, you see a scanner right here behind me. So I have a lot of uh, pretty, you know, some of the bigger negatives that uh, she would use when she would have two weeks to travel with Grandpa on the lakes. Um, you know, she. You know, she didn't take a lot of pictures because nobody took a lot of pictures in those days because that's the way it worked. But she took she took good pictures and uh, um, she took a slide of the last ship my grandpa sailed on, which I just I I took that slide into photo class at Washington Community College and used one of their scanners. And I just had a 20 by 30 made of that picture to hang in my family data room and it's really nice and the fact that grandma took it and grandpa and another guy from Lear who was his wheelsman are standing behind the pilot house of course has even more meaning right you know from a little two by two slide <clears throat> I have a 20 by 30 hanging in my room oh really that's pretty amazing yeah I thought what the heck I'm gonna try this I'm gonna I'm gonna take this picture <laughs> that I went into photoshop and I worked with in photo class I'm going to submit that to Canvas On Demand and, you know, if it's no good, it's no good, but I like it. So, you know, my, my brother and I are the recipient of a number of ancient family photos and we're always trying to figure out, you know, who, who are we going to pass the baton to, right? Does it become a, a, that's a, a, that's a very really large, a very large quantity of pictures. I mean, they're all... Yeah. There, well, there's both the digitized versions and then there's the uh, the paper versions, you know, right. or slide versions that we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do. That's a challenge. 
It's, uh, you know, I just got this tub the other day from my cousin who got it from the farm. And, you know, some of you, if you're a member of the Alpina, I think it's the Alpina Sanctuary page, maybe I've been posting these uh, posts of people that got watches for the Huron Portland Cement Company in 1950. Maybe. Like I said, the date really isn't on there. Um, and the class of 48, I think it was, and my aunt was a salutatorian, and then class of 42, where my uncle was a valedictorian. Um, you know, these newspaper clippings, I've been putting those up on the Alpina page because obviously they are going to have meaning to people up in Alpino. And uh, uh, it's just fascinating to go through and, and, and find some of the things that my grandma kept. Well, that's a good idea that, that to somehow keep them around because I'm not sure my kids would, uh, what they'd do with them. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. That's one of my biggest worries in particular in my database, which has roughly 80,000 names in it, as I really want that to go on someplace and I have to talk to the library or something about it. Yeah, the Alpena Library has a big uh, uh, historical section. Right. Yeah, I've been there many times taking, going through film and microfiche and all that stuff. Um, I, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, I know, but it's one way to keep your, keep yourself tied to your family, which is so important. I, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you enough how much I wish my great grandma could come back and we could visit for a few minutes because the questions I wanted to ask her at eight, nine and seven or whatever years old <laughs> didn't hold any water to the questions I'd like to visit with her about now. I mean, how on earth do you live in the Lofoten Islands and you, you know, you're where it's dark for three months? How do you survive that? And then what do you do in the summertime when it's daylight all the time or it's light? And how do you come to America at 18 years old? I just had this, I have this bank of questions I'd like to ask her, but somehow I don't think she's coming back for the question and answer session. Judy, yes. I just wanted to say thank you for you know hostessing this because, uh, well, like today, my power or my bandwidth went in and out and I lost power several times. So thank you for letting me back in. Oh, you're welcome. I don't know what's going on here, but so I did miss segments of your program, Mark, because all of a sudden everything would get garbled and I would lose connection. Oh, I think dear. four times during your program. So. Really? Yes. Well, I didn't have internet this morning, so I was scrambling this morning. I thought, oh, this, this is not going to work well. <laughs> well, Jody, don't, don't feel, we, we all understand your dilemma, the, uh, the last camera club, my, my internet faded out twice, but it came back, and I have no idea why. It usually, there's too many people on the internet these days, I guess. That could very well be true. I mean, it's very windy here today. Yeah, wind could have something to do with it. But I'm sorry, I missed, you know, every time I was scrambling because I didn't want to miss anything, and, and I know that I did, darn it. Well, it was uh, Judy recorded it, so you're safe. Oh, good. I think a lot of people will watch after the fact. Could be. Yep. I had fun putting it together. So I. It was very well done. It was very interesting on the uh, selection of your cameras and so forth, and the the details of the uh, settings, and uh, you know the the just the overall perspective from taking the photos for a long time well i appreciate that i appreciate the opportunity to do it i thought the design was really really pretty um you know you're if that's a slide i don't know how you do that but the font the white letters on the black and then the details of the shoot itself the whole thing was it's very um pretty to look at for lack of how what else to say well, I'm glad I, I started with the green and white I used for the Spartan marching band program. And I thought, well, maybe I should switch this up a little bit. So I went to black and I, I kind of liked how the black worked. It's real classy. Uh, it's all done in PowerPoint. So nice. was it in PowerPoint? Yeah. I forgot to look. Okay. Yeah. PowerPoint is, is really nice for 
doing stuff like this. It's just, you have to, you know, you're sitting here trying to, should I put them in alphabetical order? I mean, there's all kinds of questions that go through your mind when you're doing this thing. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. With PowerPoint, you could just put them where you want them. <laughs> exactly. You can, you can move things around very easily and replace pictures very easily and, and all that stuff. So it's, it works really well. Very Mark, I want to compliment you on your penmanship. <laughs> on my penmanship? Yeah, I love your signature and the way, I don't, just the way you do the capital letters and oh, it's, it's, well, it's oh, classy. Those, I, <laughs> I do those through Photo Logo. It's an outfit that you can do those through on the internet. And I have maybe six or seven different options. I use Buppa's Picks. So if you see Buppa's Picks, you know, yeah, I saw that. grandkids know that, that grandpa took those pictures. I have Go State for Michigan State. I've I've bought more of those than I probably needed to, but I, I really like to use them. So it's that's cool. My penmanship. See, I have um, I uh, I have this book here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's called the Palmer Method of Penmanship. <laughs> this was written in 1901, and I used this book to learn how to write cursive. And I I bought this really? a few weeks ago. <laughs> well, you should have gone parochial school. You would have been really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I slaved to get this. I, I slaved dearly to get a Palmer Method certificate <laughs> to have perfect penmanship in the seventh grade. So I got the certificate back and I got an ink pen. And I love that ink pen. And That's I was cool. sitting in class in the seventh grade one day. I don't know why, why boys have to take ink pens apart, but I took the ink pen apart, which probably shot the end of the ink pen into the radiator in the seventh grade classroom at Long Rapids. And the janitor worked for a long time to try to get that end of that ink pen back. And he, he just couldn't, I'm sure it wasn't, he just couldn't get it out of the radiator. So comically, when I went back to Long Rapids school on the day it closed, I thought I'm going to the seventh grade classroom to see if I can get that end of that ink pen. But then I thought, well, wait a minute, I don't have the other end of it anymore. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then my penmanship went downhill from there and I became a computer programmer and I started to print all the time. So Yeah, we, we understand. Yeah, we, we passed penmanship in in uh, grade school, but it's, it's degraded since then. I think yeah, I you're telling are. us your 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 penmanship on your photos is electronically generated. Right. I'm, I'm sure it is. And I <laughs> I just like how easy it goes on my pictures and, uh, and I have various options I can use. So, Right, right. <laughs> Interesting observation. Well, tomorrow is um, Nether, the muralist. I know, the muralist is tomorrow. I, I may have to create some retirement time to peek in on that one. It looks kind of intriguing. <laughs> And Friday, Carol Shafto is going to um, interpret the census as it pertains to our area. Well, the fr Friday's been moved, Jodine, till next week or the yeah, yeah. next week. Uh oh, I'm glad you told me because I didn't fix my calendar. Thank you. <laughs> I'm notorious for that. Well, yeah, we send out we send out uh, cancellation notifications and I noticed a lot of people show up for canceled programs but uh, if you if you did sign up it would uh, or show up it would say it's postponed till next week but next Friday a week from Friday March 5th I'm glad we're having this talk because I can put something on Facebook too <laughs> now Carol's working hard at it I, I reviewed her presentation twice because she doesn't have PowerPoint anymore are we all set with Nether? I I hope so. I haven't. I mean, we've sent the information to him. We had lots of good articles. Thank you for doing that. You haven't actually talked to him, though. No. Hmm. Maybe I should. I better try to call him. <laughs> Just in case. Anything else? Well, Judy, thank you for producing the program. We're, train, we're training Judy because I'm going to be gone and several people are going to be gone. So she's helping out for, for uh, hosting programs here over the next uh, month or so. 
Yeah, thanks, Judy. You're welcome. Ash, where's everybody going? Someplace oh. warmer. Oh, come on, jeez. <laughs> you live in Ann Arbor, it's sort of Celine, it's warmer down there. Yeah, it's 46 degrees here right now. Yeah, we're not quite there. Here. We're 41 I, at Long Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better get better not have your car out there at the fish shanty. I used to live on Long Lake. Oh no, we don't have vehicles out there this year. <laughs> yeah, I would strongly advise getting that car in here. <laughs> well, Tom the Oak ice Grand on Rapids. the ice on Hubbard Lake's at least 30 inches thick, so you can stick around for a while in your vehicle. <laughs> How about Grand Rapids, Joyce? Uh, I well, earlier when I was out, it was like 45, so it might even be higher right now. Oh, nice. It is. Heat wave. <laughs> now the the yeah, snow banks are melting quickly. Oh, my goodness. It's a heat wave. I didn't, I didn't use the picture that I had. I took last week after I, I walked five miles in a 16 degree below zero weather last week and took a selfie picture of what I looked like when I came back. And it was oh my goodness. <laughs> pretty funny. You were hardly I, recognizable, right? Yeah, I looked like I was about 10 feet from the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> I still well, have my toes you, and my fingers. You could have photoshopped it, you know. I, yeah, I could have. <laughs> Barely, I hear other people have done such. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> Anyone we'll else? Photo club next month. Right, right. Well, thank you very much. You brought up a lot of uh, good ideas for taking photos and a lot of right. options. Good, I'm glad. Yes, thank you. So, so Judy, you're in charge, so you can close us down unless somebody wants more comments. All right, I'm going to close her down. Okay, okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.